Well, good afternoon, ladies. How you feeling? Woo! That inspiring message. Amen. I have the awesome, um, humbling privilege to be able to speak to you on the topic of vision for our worship. Come on. And I have two points today. The first point is emptied out to worship. And the second point is no other God. Come and on. so if you would um, turn on over to 1 Chronicles chapter 16. But before you get there, I really quick want to just define the word worship. And in the Hebrew, the word means work or service. In Greek, it means respect or reverence. And in Aramaic, it means to fall down and serve. Wow. And so wow. we know that it takes some energy yes. <laughs> to be able yes. to work yes. or to do acts of service. Mm. Uh, we know that it takes our heart to be in a state of admiration in order to reverence someone. Mm -hmm. And then we know that it also takes energy and humility to be able to fall down mm -hmm. and serve someone. Amen. And it takes an emptying out of ourselves. Yes. Yeah. to come before God and worship. Wow. And then so in First uh, Chronicles chapter 16, starting in verse 23, it says, Sing to the Lord all the earth. Mm. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous deeds among all people. For great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. Uh -huh. He is to be feared above all gods. For all the gods of the nations are idols. Uh -huh. But the Lord made the heavens. Uh -huh. Splendor and majesty are before him. Uh -huh. Strength and joy are in his dwelling place. Uh -huh. Ascribe to the Lord all you families of nations. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength ascribe to the Lord the glory do his name bring an offering and come before him worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness tremble before him all the earth the world is firmly established it cannot be moved let the heavens rejoice let the earth be glad let them say among the nations the Lord reigns Amen. 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 And that word ascribe means to accredit or attribute. And when we come together to worship God, we must make sure we're emptied of ourselves so that we can give all the credit and all the glory to God that he so deserves. And I want to take a look at a story of a man who created his own image uh, for people to worship. And because of three devoted men, his heart was changed. And I'm talking about King Nebuchadnezzar oh. and the devotion of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Oh. And this leads into my second point, no other God. Amen. And I do encourage you to read this entire chapter on your own, chapter 3 of um, Daniel. And... Uh, but for now, I'm just going to summarize it. So first off, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold. Um, and he called for all the nations and all the people that speak every language to worship the image. And uh, when, they, when they heard a specific sound, and when they heard sounds of all kinds of music, they were to bow down and reverence and worship this image of gold. And whoever did not fall down and worship the image would immediately be thrown into a blazing furnace. Uh -oh. But there were three Jewish men yeah. named Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> and they neither served his gods or worshiped the image um, of gold that he had set up. And when confronted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied, to the king specifically saying, in verse 16, it said, King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want 
want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you ha you have set up. Wow, and wow. I feel that this is very symbolic yeah. of how our society today has created a false image and calls for us to worship it. Yeah. And, and to reverence everything <laughs> yeah. but our God. Yeah. Yeah. We can put our trust in our education. Mm -hmm. We can put our trust in our careers, our homes, our image, and women empowerment in the LGBTQ plus community. Mm -hmm. We can put our trust in all of these things, but let us try to stand up for the word of yeah. God. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. And then they'll ridicule us oh, yeah. and, and accuse mm -hmm. us of being a part of a cult. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so what happens to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Well, they said no. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. To worshiping the king's false image. Yeah. But what did the king do? He turned up the heat mm -hmm. seven mm -hmm. times in that fiery mm -hmm. furnace. And so what will you do when the world turns up the heat against you and calls for you to worship something other than your God? What will you do? Come on. And so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even though they were thrown into the furnace seven times as seven times as hot, the guys who thrown them into the furnace died. Yeah. They lived. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 And then after seeing how their trust in God protected them, the king put out a decree that anyone who says anything about their God Ooh. should be cut up into pieces. Yeah. Okay? And then he gave them all a promotion. <laughs> and, and this is why I'm so adamant about my devotion Come to on. God. Come on. Those of you, well, many of you know I, I just started a new job recently. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm very yeah. grateful yeah. for that job. But I had to make sure I told them up front, Wednesday nights, yeah. I do not work. Yeah. Sunday mornings, I do not work. Yeah, yeah. And when Bible Talk begins, I'm going to fight for Bible Talk too. Yeah. I'm going to make sure. Why? Because my service, my respect, and my worship belongs to God. Amen? Amen. And so I know, no matter what, that my God will protect me when I put him yeah. first. Yeah. But yeah. also my example shows to others. Yeah who the true God That's is. Right. Amen. Amen. And so I have two challenges Woo. for us today. On, the first challenge is when we come together to take the time to mentally empty ourselves and be ready to give our whole heart and worship and devotion to our God. Amen. 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 And then my second point is to let nothing, nothing get in the way of your worship to God, and to God be all the glory. Sorry guys, for some reason I was thinking I was going to like, <laughs> Amen, I was just blown away by Zasha sharing. She did such an amazing job, so many awesome lessons. Um, and I'm uh, grateful to be able to share about vision for our media. Oh, yeah. um, and so just to start, what is the vision for our media? Oh. If we could turn to Luke 19, 9 to 10, and we shall see what the vision is. Oh. Luke 19, 9 to 10. Come on. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. And so really, what is the vision for our media? The vision is to use it to seek and save the lost. Wow. That is our calling as a disciple, um, to really go after um, seeking and saving the lost and making mm -hmm. disciples of all nations. Yeah. Um, and so Matthew 28, 18 to 20, we all know the command. It's, as Mary said, it is a command. It's not a suggestion Come to on. go out and... Um, make disciples of all nations. And what's amazing is that God has given us this amazing technology of media, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, um, literally and probably other things that I can't even think of to really reach the world in places where there might not even be a church yet. But it, we can use it. Um, to share the word and for them to be able to hear it. And then maybe there's a need. People, they gather like a group, and then we need to go and plant a church in these places. Come on. Um, and it's amazing to, like, our website. 
preaching bassy, um, yes. encouraging, yes. baptized. Yeah. On, and there was like a couple yes. of months ago, someone saw our video on YouTube, a sermon, and they came out to church with his whole family. Yes. And so just seeing that that's what the purpose of our media is and to making it to make it excellent, yeah. to have people see it and to attract them to come and hear yeah. God's word and to make the decision like, okay, I need to do this and I need to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. um, and so really we can have an impact um, on someone even outside of Syracuse and in Syracuse by going after our media. Amen. Um, but what's the reason why we um, do the our media and the reason, um, like per personally, why I need to make sure that this is my reason? Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Um, grateful again that it's just what Mary shared too about this scripture. You can see just really the spirit working through. Yeah. Um, Colossians 3, 23 to 24. Come on. Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart as, yeah. as working for the Lord, not for human yeah. masters. Mm -hmm. Since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward, it is the Lord Christ who you are serving. Come on. And so for me, I'm going to take a quick second to just confess where I've kind of lost this reason um, with doing... Uh, working the cyber ministry and doing the videos and doing the photography and trying to make sure um, that everything's up and I fell short. Um, there were some sermons that didn't happen or I didn't go after leaving a memory card. Um, it just really wasn't working at it with all of my heart. Um, but I think it's because I lost focus of what the vision is and the purpose of it, as I mentioned before, is seeking and saving the lost. Um, and having that in our in our minds as we're doing it and as we're serving, um, and having that as the reason why I'm doing this and not for like, hey, look at me, I'm doing this. This is my gift that God's giving me and putting the focus on me, but just putting, getting outward focused yeah. and really just focusing on why, why am I doing this? And the reason is, um, to seek and save the lost, yes. not just here in Syracuse, but everywhere. Amen. So, um, I have a couple of practicals for you guys. Come on. Um, Come on, And really is just, actually there's one, step up. Oh, hey. Hey. Oh. <laughs> this is This takes a lot for me to say because um, I want to hold on to things. I'm like, this is, I like the cyber ministry. I want to do this. I, I want to do it myself, but... Um, I'm realizing that I can't. I need help. There are other mm -hmm. things with me working a full-time job, being an ICCM, wanting yeah. to be on campus. I'm just starting to, like, God's bringing me to a point where I realize I need help. Mm -hmm. The Mosby's are the other, like, people in the cyber ministry, and um, they just had a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's oh, us yes. three. <laughs> and so we really do need help. We can't just do it ourselves. And so if you have like any sort of passion or if you have a little gift of um, photography, I'm grateful for Valerie for stepping Woo! up and helping out with the photography because right now I can't take pictures. Um, and so just if there's some <laughs> Something in media um, that you know that you can do, <laughs> um, step up, say something, vocalize it. Or even if you just want to help, you're like, hey, train me. I'm yeah. willing, like, I want to um, help and raise other people up in this area. Um, and so really just with the campus Instagram and with Facebook, um, so I've noticed that a lot of times with going around and sharing on campus, People sometimes don't want to exchange numbers. Mm. They instead are like, "Do you are you on social media?" Mm. And it's like, "Yes, we are." But so we're not posting a lot and really that's because I was the one going after posting it, but then things happen. Um, so these are ways that we can really make, yeah. um, you know, the life as a disciple yeah. and um, make it attractive, bring Come people on, in on, through yeah. these yeah. Um, free Excellent. services. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but really, we just need the help. Yeah. Um, and so if you do have a passion or if you would like to just, you know, hey, how can I help? please come up to me or the Mosby's um, and we'd be so grateful for your help and going after the cyber ministry this year. Thank you and to God be with you.
you for this opportunity to speak to you. Um, so vision for spiritual growth. Really, um, there are just two points. Um, basically, um, I'm gonna, we're going to look at a couple passages and kind of look at the extremes, like, okay, tips, if you don't want to spiritually grow, <laughs> there's something in the Bible about that. And if you want to grow, there's um, scriptures about that too. So Genesis 19, um, we're going to read about Lot, and you know the story, probably most of you. Um, and so he's just being led out of Sodom with his family to be saved. Um, so 15 to 22. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot, saying, Hurry, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. When he hesitated, the men grasped his hand and the hands of his wife and of his two daughters and led them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they had brought them out, one of them said, Flee for your lives, don't look back, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you will be swept away. But Lot said to them, No, my lords, please, your servant has found favor in your eyes, and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the mountains. This disaster will overtake me, and I'll die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to, and it is small. Let me flee to it. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, Very well, I will grant this request too. I will not overthrow the town you speak of, but flee there quickly, because I can't do anything until you reach it. That is why the town was called Zoar. Zoar means small. So one of the first things I see is just that Lot hesitated. Mm. You know, we're in this, he's in a serious situation, and I'm like, well, I don't think I would be hesitating, but how many times in my life, you know, do I do that? Mm. Or get an urging to talk to someone, and I hesitate. But Lot hesitated, and not only that, he just said, I can't. I can't wow. go there. Don't take me to the mountains. Give me what's small. Um, um, so um, basically, um, I think there's a <coughs> saying, excuse me, go small or go home. Mm -hmm. no. 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 No, no. That's not it. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, no, you don't, you know. Um, he chose the path of least resistance. Yeah. Um, just wanted to stay in his comfort zone. And if you read further, um, you know someone who looked back um, and what happened to them. You know, do I come to church and be like, let me just do the bare minimum? You know? um, that will keep you definitely stunted spiritually, and you'll be stuck in 2019. Oh, wow. Wow. Okay. Habakkuk, okay, we have good news. <laughs> Habakkuk 2, 2 through 4. And I'm going to read from the ESV version because it just has a nice way of putting it. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on tablets so he may run who reads it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end, it will not lie. If it seems slow, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. So, wait for it. <laughs> what vision will you see God do in 2020? Um, many years ago in Boston, we got a new evangelist. And at that point, upon reflection, I didn't realize how, how stagnant I had become. And so the first thing he did was just talk to everyone and say, we want to help you have dreams and visions. And it doesn't need to be spiritual. <laughs> and I was excited <laughs> because I realized I didn't have a spiritual vision. But so anything, anything that you want yeah. to go after. Yeah. And, and that was a good place to start. Amen. It's like the Grinch where his heart starts you know, <laughs> a little bit yeah. bigger. So I was like, OK, I can pick something. You know, and work on it. Yeah. So for me at that time, I was unhappy with my job, so I chose going to grad school. And really, that's, I mean, there's much more to the story, but I applied to Syracuse and I applied to Simmons in Boston, and I didn't get into Simmons. <laughs> so 
So um, the next, another important part is just living by faith. God's plan was for Lot and his family to go to the mountain, uh, but he chose what was small, you know. So we have so much um, opportunities, you know, here in the church. Yeah. So as far as discipling, just like with Lot, when someone grabs your hand and wants to lead you, don't resist them. Yeah. <laughs> you know, say, yes, Good thank you for helping Amen. me. Good thank one. you for um, showing me this way. Um, prayer. Yeah. We, we have it all. We have so much. So, um, one challenge, I, the challenge I have for you is just to create a vision board. Mm. Oh. And I know some of you have done it before. And it doesn't need to be fancy, but just something to visually remind you of the things you want to do this year because wow. the year goes by so fast. And goals you thought you had mm. were going to do so easily. Yeah. It's like June and you're like, what, what have I done? <laughs> yeah. But yeah. just a visual yeah. reminder, sharing it with people that mm. will help yeah. you and be like, hey, how's that going? I heard you want to be a Bible talk leader or I heard yeah. you yeah. had a goal of this or that. Um, you want to go to GLC? You need to start now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. oh, right. Preparing for that, right? Oh, so yeah. just making up something that you can look at. And in in Habakkuk, what he says is, um, um, oh, my, that's awesome. you know, yeah. write the vision, make it plain on tablets, yeah. so he may run who reads it. Yes. And yeah. So that's what I love about it. There's spur, spurring to action. Yes. Yes. You know, it's not just like, I have this idea and I want to do it. Mm -hmm. But to God Amen. be the glory, yes. 2020 will be a year of vision. Yes. Yes. I do want to express my admiration for all the all the women in here who have great visions for their personal families. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to talk about the family of the church of believers. Come on, um, come on Kathy. The Greek word for brothers and sisters is Anna Adelphi P H O I, and it refers to believers, both men and women, as part of God's family. Um, I. George and I are very honored and, and privileged to lead you know, Mercy Worldwide for Syracuse. Mm -hmm. And when we correspond with other, other locations and with, with LA, we always um, uh, give a salutation and an and ending that says, family to the end. Mm -hmm. So Mercy Worldwide, we are family to the end. So I want to talk about the family of believers. Amen. Uh, if you go to Mark 3, 31, it says, Jen, Jesus' mother and brothers arrived. Standing outside, they sent someone in to call him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they told him, Your mother and brothers are outside looking for you. Jesus said, Who are my mother and my brothers? And he looked, he looked at all those seated in a circle around him and said, Here are my brothers, or here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does God's will is my brother and sister and mother. So are we brothers and sisters, and another scripture it also talks about where Jesus calls his friend. Mm -hmm. um, so, Psalm 68.6 says, God sets the lonely in family. Mm -hmm. In families. Um, 20 years ago, I was living in Atlanta, and my physical family was in California and Ohio. Um, George was living in Dallas at the time. I lived a block away from a, a lovely Methodist church. I love church and other church buildings. Um, I went once a week, and I slipped in the back pew and out quietly and whenever they were done. Um, I'm sorry, I can do it. I was a shy girl here. <laughs> um, I was lonely spiritually, and God made a way for me to be transferred to Syracuse. George came up here because um, he was out of a job. He'd been a jobless in Dallas for over a year, and his sister Marta and her husband had planted the church in Syracuse um, back in 1993. 
And she said, come on up here. Well, we got, we got some disciples in the church, and one of them gave him a job. So now here I am in Atlanta, and he, you know, and he's up here. Um, but, but guess what, though? God wanted me to be here. Yeah. I live in Atlanta. There's a huge I, uh, ICOC church in Atlanta, but no one there ever met me, and I had to come to Syracuse. What's up, yes? And I remember I, I got here, and it was in May, and we were having a cold snap. I stood in my backyard while they unloaded my truck with Pam O'Donnell. And cry oh, and wow. cry. Oh. What am I doing in this horrible desolate place? <laughs> well, God showed me what I was doing here. I was here to find Him. Come on. Uh, I needed to. See, God made a way for me to be transferred up here through my job. So I was working down there, and George would send me newspapers with jobs in them. And um, they were looking for an account manager at United Healthcare, and that's exactly what I did in Atlanta. I'm like, Whoa, God, you have really set this up. So I came up here, and. Um, uh, you know, maybe six months later, I was baptized. I was baptized by George's sister, and he was baptized before me by George's sister's husband. So um, we just got to see them at Christmas. It was a great reunion. That's awesome. Um, but your vision for your family, your church family, it comes from having faith. And First Peter 5, 8 through 9, um, be sober and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion mm -hmm. looking for someone to devour. Mm -hmm. yeah. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. Mm -hmm. Now, I bring that up because um, I was reading the new Ron Hardy book that actually was given to mm -hmm. Bradley last mm -hmm. night. Um, we have some more copies of that. But... Every year the ICC sets a theme, like this is year of vision, mm -hmm. okay? They set the theme for all the churches around the world. And in 2016, Kim McKean declared it the year of family. Yes. Um, and many of, the family in other many of the families in other countries were not able to afford or even obtain visas to come to the United States for the GLCs. Mm -hmm. So that year, he said, if Moses cannot come to go to the mountains, them bring them out to Moses. Uh -huh. And that year there were seven geographic mission conferences yes. around the, outside the U.S. Yep. And so just expressing his vision for additions to the family from all over the world. Come on. Thank you, Kim McKean. Yes. Yeah. Um, Galatians 6.10. That's awesome. There are so, yeah. many, so many scriptures about family. Mm -hmm. um, Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people. Mm -hmm. Especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Mm -hmm. God loves unity. I challenge you to have a dream for the family of believers mm -hmm. and encourage and inspire it in others. Go for 70 in 2020, <coughs> but then don't stop. Come on! Hello. Hello. Okay. <laughs> Get us healthy. All right. There we go. Mine is about physical health or fitness, and everybody's all nervous and up. Oh, oh, I promise, no. and I ask you, please don't zone out or, <laughs> or think I can't do this or I, I don't want to. I've tried before. I can't. Please stay with me. Okay. Yes. Stay with me. All right. Bring the we think of um, always physical fitness, physical health. We think of exercise, which is great. Mm. In First Timothy four, eight, it says for physical training is of some value, but the sentence before First Timothy four seven says, "But reject irreverent and silliness. Oh. Instead, train yourself for godliness." Yeah. And this is what this is all about. It's training ourselves to be godly. Come on, yes. being overweight. I'm going to take Oksana's, is a sin. <laughs> and you know, it's a sin of debauchery, idolatry. We idolize food. We overuse it. We're addicted to it. We use it to cope. Um, and you know what? It's one of these sins that we cannot hide from. It's out there for everybody to see. Um, ladies, I hate to say it, but there's too many in this room that struggle with this sin. Too many. Uh -huh. In the world, being obese or overweight is a minority. Hmm. It shouldn't be a majority. 
Um, first, we have to realize that we all have things that we can do better, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when we acknowledge that we are flawed, then we're okay to be fixed. Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. When I'm saying these things to you, I'm saying them to myself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I've had weight has been the thorn in my side my whole entire life. Mm -hmm. I remember being three and four and five years old mm -hmm. and people making fun of me. And then I dealt with eating disorders when I got into college and being a flight attendant, I got weighed in every three months. I mean, I was doing very restrictive things, very dangerous things. Um, I've dealt with depression, which has made me gain weight, lose weight. I've had injuries. I've had illnesses. Um, just, you know, I've laid, weighed a lot less than I do now, and I've weighed more than I do now. But in um, last year, I joined Weight Watchers, and I lost almost 20 pounds. Whoa. But I put 12 of it back on. Yeah. Oh, okay. Take it back on. New Year. <laughs> but I can't give up. Right. So right. And neither yeah. can any one of you guys. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. We have to come to the truth about what we are and we're not doing to be our best for God's kingdom. Mm -hmm. um, food is an addiction mm -hmm. for a lot of us, yeah. uh, especially sugar. Yes. You know, you study out about sugar, it's what's killing Americans. Yes. You're right, for sure. Other countries don't die and don't deal with obesity. It's only Americans because of the amount of sugar yep. that we have in our diets. Um, and I have to say, if you saw your dear sister outside doing cocaine oh, wow. or heroin mm -hmm. or smoking cigarettes around the corner, wouldn't you want to help her? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wouldn't you say, please let me help you. I love you. Let's change this. Come on. It's, just, it's the same thing with food. Wow. Come on, T. Right? Yeah, right. All right, let's read 1 Corinthians 11. Come on, T. Verse 1. I'm going to read it in some different verses uh, from uh, different versions because I'd love to hear the different ways that they're put. Mm -hmm. It says, follow, New International Version, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Mm -hmm. New Living Translations, and you should imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Mm -hmm. Berean Study Bible, you are to imitate me just as I imitate Christ. Contemporary English, you must follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Mm -hmm. International Standard Version, imitate me as I do my Messiah. Wow. <laughs> How can we win the world and be our best for God when we're showing people, I'm not doing it, mm -hmm. I'm in sin, but you can do it. Mm -hmm. And we have to have faith yep. and hope yep. in ourselves that we can do this. Yep. We can change the way we're doing things. No excuses. Most of us and the reasons we have for being overweight or not eating well mm. and the limitations that we have and the illnesses that we have and the medicine that we're on is because mm -hmm. of the extra weight we are carrying. Mm. Are you taking care of your body? Mm. Inside and outside. Mm -hmm. Making on. a decision to change these things. It's a decision. One decision. Mm -hmm. And you know what's best about it? If you mess up today, or tomorrow, or the next day, you start over the yeah, next yeah, yeah. day. Yeah. It's one decision. It's not difficult. It's easy. Yeah. Come on, t -shirt. Are you being active? Are you taking a walk? I promise you, if you go outside and take a 15, 20-minute walk in the fresh air, I don't care how cold it is, wrap yourself up, fresh air, the sun, vitamin D. Yeah. Do you know what it does to you mentally? Mm -hmm. You deal with depression or sadness or whatever, go out and take a walk for 15 or 20 minutes. See what happens. Come on, Tisha. What are you putting into your body? What things are healthy and what things are not? Mm -hmm. I got a little prop. Come on, cookies. <laughs> look at this. Oh, Does that look beautiful? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look how colorful. This is life. If you put this stuff in your body, and not just fruits and vegetables, beans and things from the ground, things that God made, look how beautiful that is. Yeah. This is life. Uh-oh. 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 <laughs> uh -oh. You know what? You know what? It's not funny. This is 
this will kill you. Yeah. This is death. Yeah. Anything in a bag that's processed or sugar, it's made by a machine. Mm -hmm. And you're putting that in your body, which God, God made you perfect. He knitted you together. And you're putting this in your body? Come on, Tisha. And I know I'm talking a lot about food, but you know what? 20% of being physically fit is how active you are. 80% yeah. is what you put in your mouth, in your yeah. body. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you can exercise, exercise, exercise. If you're putting bad stuff in your body, you're not going to yeah. change wow. yourself. That's okay? excellent. Um, and instead of thinking about depriving yourself, yeah. think of it as pampering yourself. Oh. Yeah. Pamper yourself. <laughs> how often do you get to... Do something for yourselves and yeah. take care oh, of yourselves. God. Pamper yourself. Mm -hmm. yes. Have awesome. some tea instead of a soda. Mm -hmm. yeah. Make it and be cozy with it. Have, you know, pamper yourself with good food. Come on. Yeah. Don't think of it as deprivation. Think of it as taking care of Come yourself. On. I mean, how awesome is that? You yeah. can change your patterns. Mark 9.23 says, And Jesus said to them, If you can... All things are possible Amen. for the one who believes. My challenge to you today, change your mind on how you want to live each day. Yes. Get out and move. Volunteer. Take a walk downtown. Help Kathy with um, mercy. <laughs> go give out some sandwiches downtown. Take a walk. I mean, go share your faith. Get out and move, no matter yeah. what you do. Uh, let's be our best for God. Amen. <laughs> I feel like uh, a lot of my lesson was already in everyone else's lesson, so amen, that's great. My lesson is called Vision for the Mission. Come on. And I was thinking about it, I realized from the very beginning of time, God gave humans a mission. Um, he started with Adam and Eve to be fruitful and multiply and increase. Um, and he just continued throughout history. He had many visions um, with a mission in, in mind for people. For example, Noah, Abraham, Samuel, Esther, Ruth, Joshua, Moses, Elijah, Isaiah, Daniel, Paul, Mary, Rahab. There are so many. And uh, it's encouraging that a lot of them are women. Women played a yeah, very important role. And um, he had a vision for each of them. And that a mission that they were to carry out that involved the salvation of souls. And it took strength that they did not think that they had. Uh, if we look at Esther's example in Esther chapter 4, we will see how she responds to her current situation. In verse 4, it says that Esther's female servants and her eunuchs came and reported the news to her, and the queen was overcome with fear. She sent clothes for Mordecai to wear so he could take off his sackcloth. So there's, uh, her people are going to die. And so her uncle tells her later on in verse 13, he told the messengers to reply to Esther, don't think that you will escape the fate of all the Jews because you are in the king's palace. If you keep silent at this time, liberation and deliverance will come to the Jewish people from another place, but you and your father's house will be destroyed. Who knows, perhaps you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. Come on. And we know that she was overcome with fear, but she responds in verse 15 and 16. Go and assemble all the Jews who can be found in Susa and fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, day or night. I and my female servants will also fast in the same way. After that, I will go to the king, even if it is against the law. If I perish, I perish. Mm. And so what I love about her is that she did not give in to her fear, but she fought it. She fought it just like Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane with his mission to go to the cross. And so oftentimes when we are faced with the mission, it can, we can feel like, I can't do this. I don't have the talents for this. Um, and that's just not true. I love what Mary shared about having, we all have gifts. Yes. And the good thing is, is that if we use them, God gives us more. He tells yeah. us that in the parable of the talents. And so we need to, we need to pray about this. Like, 
ask God. Um, we know that all the, the commission given to us is to make disciples. So, you know, do you pray, God, you know, help me become the woman you envision me to be? Or help me complete my mission here on earth. Help me understand what it is. Um, and for, for me, I remember I became a disciple around seven years ago. And I heard that there was a church that was going to be planted in Moscow. And so I thought I can use the gift that God gave me knowing the Russian language and going to help the people there because Fun. not a lot of people know Russian. And so I could use it. Yes. And so it took prayer and wanting to use my gifts for God. And... God gave me a lot more. I feel like Moscow was a place where I really got to grow up. Um, it taught me a lot of different things. I even And he also helped invest in my talent of languages because I was able to translate um, every service for the English speakers in the church and um, disciple the French speaking there. And so wow. that was something I didn't even uh, think or imagine that would happen, but um, God... God had a plan in mind, and so I still one day have a dream to go to a French-speaking country, um, nice. just not now, um, but, um, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, if you think about 2019, I had a goal in the beginning of the year, God, please help me make, help make five women into disciples, mm -hmm. and, um, I got I got to help three, <laughs> um, yeah. and moving and changing jobs and stuff. Kind of I had some distractions throughout the years throughout the year, um, and sometimes women walked away. But if you set a goal and you pray about it, I think that's a great place to start. Mm -hmm. and God is the yeah. one that will come through and help. Um, and I believe it's so. How many women do you want to help make disciples this year? Um, mm -hmm. Who do you mm -hmm. want to see um, saved and so it, it takes prayer and fasting, yeah. fasting mm -hmm. for the woman that you're studying the Bible with, fasting yeah. for um, those that you're reaching out to, for God to, to act, and um, it would be amazing, it will be amazing, you know, to see all of the women that are going to come this year, oh, yes. and yeah. we, will, we will be able to grow, yeah. and, um, and so I hope that at the end of the year we can all be like Paul in Acts 26, 19, where he's talking to King Agrippa, and he told him that, Therefore, King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that is my prayer for all of us this year. I look forward to fighting. Um, I know it's hard work. I know we have to overcome um, you know, different challenges um, to, to help grow this church, which I'm sure... Melissa will preach about next, but um, I'm excited to build with everyone and to work uh, the mission together. Amen. Amen. Amen.